Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. A disturbing video posted on Facebook shows a Washtenaw County Sheriff's deputy repeatedly punching a woman at a crime scene. A lot of people understandably upset as that video has been making its rounds on social media. The Washtenaw County Sheriff's Office says an investigation has been opened and some of their staff have been placed on leave. The video clearly shows one officer getting very rough with that woman before a man tries to intervene and ends up being tased by another officer. Victor Williams is live tonight. Victor, obviously this needs more context, but it's still a, a really difficult thing to see. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this video has been shared thousands of times online and the main comment I'm starting to see or have been seeing is, is this at all necessary? She was open. She wasn't doing anything. Jaquizi Diggins had a hard time holding back the tears, reliving the dramatic incident caught on cell phone video showing a Washtenaw County Sheriff's deputy striking her mother multiple times while trying to make an arrest on Apple Ridge Street. The officer punched my arm her face three times for no reason. And she is a female. The footage was all captured by Tova Taylor the night of Memorial Day. It was getting crazy. It just seemed like to be more uh, police than what was necessary. Her husband seen it and turned around, then they tased him. It was crazy. Both of Jacuizzi's parents, Shatina and Daniel L., were arrested. But what led to this happening in the first place? It started all over an altercation, over something crazy. Some, some females got into it, a girl lost, and somebody got to shoot her. Jacuizzi and her sister Charity say their parents are Moorish Americans. We aren't. U.S. citizens, we're free, Moorish American, we go by our own law. So when their mother stood her ground refusing to stop recording, that's when this part of the incident began. The police came harassing me and my, my mother and it wasn't doing nothing but recording and saying our rights. Nevertheless, the question remains, did this really need to happen? Nobody can believe this type of stuff actually happens and it happens in your own neighborhoods and stuff like that. And these police is going too dang gone far. Now we're told that unfortunately this isn't the first time that this has happened to that woman that was involved. On top of that, once again, uh, there has been a few people placed on administrative leave until they figure out what exactly happened here, uh, where they will be conducting an internal investigation. Reporting live, Victor Williams, Local 4. And we know you'll continue to follow it for us, Victor. We appreciate it. Turning now to the coronavirus pandemic, more than 55,000 people have now tested positive for it in Michigan. That's right. Today, the state is reporting 223 new cases and 26 additional deaths. We've now lost 5,266 people to the virus. The Grand Rapids region is seeing the largest spike in cases. Governor Whitmer's newest executive order expands testing eligibility to anyone with a reason, be it even the mildest of symptoms, recent exposure to someone who tested positive, or other reasons such as 10 days working outside your home. We learned today two malls, Great Lakes Crossing and 12 Oaks, are set to reopen at 11 a.m. on Thursday. They will be open from 11 to 7, Monday through Saturday, 11 to 6, on Sundays, the malls will ramp up cleaning, we're told, and they encourage the use of masks inside the malls. It is reopening Tuesday for Michigan's auto dealers. Showrooms are now open, though, for a point through appointment only, at least for now. Our business editor, Rob Maloney, live tonight at Galling Chrysler Jeep Dodge in Bloomfield Hills with a look at how business is being done there. Rod. Well, Devin, you know, a lot of the uh, younger set like that internet shopping, and there's been a lot of that actually. But for many of us in Michigan, we still love our cars and we still love that showroom experience, and they got back to it today. Oh, I'm very glad they're open today. <laughs> <laughs> and why not, considering the eyesores just back from Florida picked up a new SUV today? I said I wanted a white Jeep Grand Cherokee, and that's what we're getting. Well, they got on the phone weeks ago and signed the papers in person today. So I've been communicating with Brian uh, for some time, getting this all organized and uh, set up so that when we did come back into Michigan, uh, everything was ready. Even with the appointment only sales and social distancing measures, the dealers are glad to have the doors open again as well. The appointment board filled up today at Galling and is filling up for the rest of the week. Joel Sasser is Galling's general manager. We're very happy. Uh, we're selling cars and delivering cars by appointment only. 
you know, we did pretty good uh, selling cars and delivering to home and office, but people really want to, they want to come to the showroom. They want to get in the car, feel it. Just down the street, George Glassman runs Subaru, Kia, and Hyundai dealerships. It feels good to, uh, to be back in business. His doors are open to appointment books filling, and he's moving metal as well. And he says now he sees a new and different way of doing business online, delivery, or in his building. We need to be available for the customers to buy uh, on terms that are good for them. Now, a lot of people are wondering what other businesses might open, what other areas might open in the state. And the governor today did hint that she's looking at other areas of the state that could get to stage four, much like up north. She says we'll hear more about that in the days to come. Reporting live in Bloomfield Hills, Rod Maloney. Local food. It'll be something to watch here. All right, Rod. Now, Governor Whitmer took a moment during today's briefing to address reports that her husband, Mark Mallory, had asked a business up north for preferential treatment involving their dock and boat at their cottage. He jokingly asked if marrying, if being married to me might move him up in the queue. Obviously, with the motorized boating prohibition in our early days of COVID-19, he thought it might get a laugh. It didn't. And to be honest, I wasn't laughing either when it was relayed to me because I knew how it would be perceived. He regrets it. I wish it wouldn't have happened. And that's really all we have to say about it. Governor said her husband did go up to their cottage for a day or two to rake leaves, but that she stayed home. It's the type of day when the heat and humidity just hits you right in the face Man. the minute you step outside. I'm not sure we're quite uh, toughened up for this just <laughs> yet. Let's check in with Ben, though, because we do have a little bit of storm activity to our south, Ben. Yeah, enough uh, juice out there to uh, at least fuel up a few thunderstorms, and some of these have gone severe. We had a warning in Lucas County around Toledo. Now we've got another one there in Hillsdale County, but in between, there are still some storms that bear watching there in the south zone. Here's four live radar. You can see a lot of what's in Lenawee County has fallen apart, but you get just north of there. Uh, we're also watching some storms there around Manchester and south of 94 in parts of Washtenaw County. So we're going to keep our eyes on that. Looks like we just picked up a lightning strike there. These usually tend to grow pretty tall and uh, gets, uh, get intense and then sort of fall apart. Uh, but there's more on that storm uh, down there in Hillsdale County, uh, which does have a warning on it as we speak. Otherwise, it is warm. It is humid out there. And uh, we have had reports of some damage from these storms in Toledo. You can see some of those spots uh, down there south of the city uh, did have some trees down, 60 mile an hour wind gust estimated, and also some reports of one inch hail. Otherwise, we are expecting to see plenty of heat for at least the next couple of days. And then things really start to change. Cold front comes through Thursday with our best chance of showers and storms. And then it is below average temperatures as we head into the upcoming weekend. Quite a switch. We'll take a look at that. And don't forget, you can take a second look at the forecast beyond the weekend on the local forecasters app. It's got interactive radar, severe weather alerts, and a lot more. Just search in your favorite app store for WDIV. Guys. Okay, Ben. A new warning tonight about a serious risk for children that you may not have even given any thought. It's related to the pandemic, but not the virus itself. Our Dr. Frank McGeorge is here to explain. Doc. Yeah, Kim, the public pools may be in limbo, but debt backyard pools, they're open again, and the steamy weather has lots of families pulling out the kiddie pools, too. Tonight, the nation's pediatricians are sounding the alarm, warning that the pandemic could increase the risk of children drowning at home. Children who would normally be in school, daycare, or camp are now home instead. With so many parents distracted by working from home, experts fear while you're hopping on a Zoom, your child could be slipping outside. Making sure that kids can't get to water when they're not supposed to be in the water is the most important thing for families to consider. Dr. Ben Hoffman from the American Academy of Pediatrics warns about 70% of drownings in younger children occur when they were not supposed to be in the pool. Making matters worse, fewer kids may be learning how to swim this summer. Because of the pandemic, it's unlikely that parents are gonna be able to find swim lessons for their kids for the foreseeable future. What that means is if kids can't learn to swim, we need to rely on other layers of protection to keep them safe around water. If you have a swimming pool, we need to make sure that kids can't get to it when it's not swim time and they're not being adequately supervised, which means four-sided fencing and a gate. If you don't have one, get one. Make sure wading pools are dumped out when they're not in use and that buckets and bathtubs are emptied right away too. If there is water around, children will find it. 
the parent or caregiver needs to be supervising that child. You can't leave them alone even for a second. Yeah, you need to be aware of your neighbor's pools and hot tubs as well. Blow up pools are one of the hottest items for sale right now, which means there could be a risk popping up right next door where there wasn't before. And I, and I understand there's also concern about open water activities as well. Well, yeah, sure, Kim. You know, with people not able to travel, a lot of people are looking to buy kayaks or paddle boards. In fact, the American Canoe Association expects an influx of beginning paddlers who may be heading out with insufficient instruction. You need to always make sure to wear a life jacket and choose a location that's safe for your ability level. Yeah, Back to you. definitely good tips. Okay, thank you, Dr. McGeorge. Of course, picking a school is one of the most important decisions made by college-bound high school students and their families. There are quite a lot of questions to be asked and, of course, campuses to see. And COVID-19 has changed that. But as Kim DiGiulio shows us, schools and potential students are finding ways to connect virtually. This time of year, a lot of high school students take the time to visit colleges. Since those visits can't happen right now, certain universities have gone virtual. This is the new normal, college visits online. You're going to see 25 different virtual booths, and in those, you'll see videos of campus, you'll see videos of students, you'll see lots of information about each institution, and you can even submit questions. Participating in this fair are Michigan's independent colleges and universities. University of Detroit Mercy, also in Detroit, the College for Creative Studies, and in the metro Detroit area, we have Lawrence Technological University. These colleges and universities will be online for the next two days answering questions. This is anything from questions about student life and academics to financial aid packages and what options might be moving forward. And with many people's financial situations changing rapidly, the college fair may be worth logging into for students who are already enrolled and have already filled out their FAFSA. They may have filled it out last year and their financial situation has changed dramatically in the past several weeks. So they can always fill it out again. They can contact the institution where their student may have been accepted or may be interested in applying and talk through what their options are. Now this college fair is open to everyone. So if you just lost your job and you always wanted to go back to school, now could be the perfect time. You can find a link to that college fair on our website on Detroit.com. I'm Kim DiGiulio, Local 4. New at 6. The Area Agency on Aging, 1B, has taken on two massive projects in our community, reaching out to vulnerable seniors. We distributed 2,250 boxes, and right now we're on our second round of 4,700 boxes. Keeping our most vulnerable senior citizens safe, that's coming.